Hi everybody, Jim Sammons here. Uh, one of my favorite species to target uh, in my travels around the world saltwater fishing, yellowfin tuna. Um, why? Because A, they are a strong fish, they get really big, and of course they are delicious, raw and cooked. <laughs> so uh, we do a lot of um, catch and fillet rather than catch and release on these fish because they are so good. Um, some of the places that you're gonna have your best shots at getting tuna, uh, particularly from a kayak, are areas like uh, Southern Baja, uh, the East Cape of Baja, uh, Costa Rica, Panama. These are places that I've caught the most of them. Uh, we also get them occasionally within paddling distance from shore of San Diego. Uh, the last couple of years we've done pretty well on them. Um, so I'm going to kind of go over some of the gear that we use, some stuff you should have with you if you want to target tuna from your kayak. So if you want to go out there and target tuna in your kayak, uh, you got to have several different setups because A, you might be catching, you know, 20 pound tuna. You might have the opportunity to catch a hundred pound tuna. So obviously you're going to have to have different gear. Also, one of the things about tuna is they may, may get keyed in on really small baits or they may be keyed in on big baits. So you need to be prepared for that as well. So I'm gonna kinda show you the, the setups that I use when I go out tuna fishing in my kayak. First off, hopefully we've got some live bait. Now, live bait could be little sardinas and live bait could be big mackerel or even bigger bonita. So you want to make sure that you are prepared for that. You've got the right setup as far as small hooks for those small baits, big hooks for the big baits, and even bridling your bait. So if you have a bridling needle uh, and the floss or, or specter that you need to bridle a bait. With tuna, again, it, this is going to come down to uh, the size of the bait and the size of the fish that you're targeting. So you may want to have a 20 pound leader you may want to have a hundred pound leader. So obviously this goes, you know, your whole setups will change based on um, the size of the bait and the size of the fish that you're targeting. So have that variety of hooks from maybe two aughts up to 10 aughts and have that leader size from 20 to 80. So you make sure that you have everything covered depending on the size of the fish that you're gonna see. The nice thing about tuna is you tend to catch them in open water. You don't have to worry about them running into structure so much. So it's not a big issue to have really heavy line. You may be in for a longer fight with that lighter line, but you also may get more bites with the lighter line. So don't be afraid to fish a little bit lighter line uh, when you're targeting these fish. Um, how do you locate them? Well, it, it's a, a lot of luck, um, particularly if you're just paddling offshore, uh, going out there and finding them. Looking for bird schools is always key. You know, those are, birds are gonna be your best indicator of, of fish. You know, you're gonna see them circling, you're gonna see them diving. Uh, off our local waters, looking for um, offshore kelp patties. So basically a kelp patty is kelp that is broken loose from the kelp beds and is now in a big clump and it's floating miles off, offshore. And what that does, it just becomes a, a colony. You know, you get small fish on it, a little bit bigger, a little bit bigger, a little bit bigger. Everything circles around these uh, kelp patties and you will find uh, yellowtail, yellowfin, bluefin, you'll find everything out there in open water because it's a little oasis out in the middle of nowhere. So if you can find good kelp patties when you're out paddling, always a good place to drop a bait and troll around. We also will find at certain locations such as uh, down in Panama and Costa Rica and some spots down in Baja where there's some high spots, some hard bottom, some structure that holds bait. And then in those areas, you can actually catch these fish circling those areas and you'll get a lot of uh, tuna by vertical jigging. So you've got live bait fishing, vertical jigging, and then visually seeing fish popping on the surface, you know, as you're trolling that live bait. So always have something ready to throw. And when we talk about throwing for tuna, you know, I mentioned before that you might have uh, small baits 
and you might have big baits. So you need to also be prepared to throw small lures or throw large lures. If these fish are keyed in, I was actually out on a trip uh, going after bluefin tuna and these were 100 plus pound bluefin tuna and they were eating baits this big. It was very difficult to match that, have some, you know, we didn't have baits that small in our boat. We didn't have lures that small. And so we had a really hard time getting bit. The guys who were getting bit were throwing little live, or throwing, the guys who were getting bit were throwing very small lures. So, you know, something like this, believe it or not. And they were getting 100 pound bluefin tuna on little small lures. So, you know, carrying stuff like this in your boat or in your kayak, if they are keyed in on those small baits. But also, you know, if they're up on the surface really crashing aggressively on big baits, having a, a big splasher, you know, poppers like this, big lures like this that run subsurface. And again, if, if you don't have that live bait, having a trolling setup. So those are all types of lures that you should really look at carrying on your boat. It may seem kind of crazy, but a setup that I always carry when I go out tuna fishing is actually a bass rod. Because if they are keyed in on those little tiny baits, throwing these little tiny lures with a big heavy rod is almost impossible. So, I'll go out with something like this. And the nice thing about being in a kayak if you're doing this is that you don't need big heavy gear in a kayak anyway. You need good quality gear, but it doesn't need to necessarily be really big and heavy. So you can get, you can get away with catching fairly decent sized fish on small reels because the kayak is going to get dragged around after the fish. So I always have a small bait caster that I can throw those light lures with. Next setup is that, that standard trolling a live bait and this setup I control a small bait or a big bait because trolling obviously is not casting. So I can get that out there, I can change up the leader size. So the standard setup here is 60 to 80 pound Seaguar Threadlock hollow core braid and then just changing up that leader size whether it's 20 pound or it's 100 pound depending on the size of the fish. A lever drag reel. I can't say enough that I like to have a lever drag reel when I'm trolling live baits because I can adjust the tension on the reel based on the size of the bait because you want that fish to be able to hit that bait and run with it. Minimal pressure. So when it goes, it can just take line. But if you have that big bait, that big bait that you've bridled, well, that bait's just gonna keep taking line. So by having a lever drag reel, I can bump the reel just slightly up into gear, just enough to hold the bait in place, but then when a fish hits it, it can still run. <laughs> what a beautiful sound that is. And the nice thing about the lever drag reel, of course, this is a Truth LG, but the nice thing about having that lever drag reel is you have preset your drag, meaning I never have to play with the drag adjustment. I just throw it up into gear where I have preset it, and I know that I'm gonna have the right amount of pressure that I'm comfortable fighting a fish with. And again, if you're going for tuna, you can be a little more patient. You don't have to lock down the drag like you have to with say a yellowtail that's gonna run into structure. Tuna's not gonna run into structure. You can fish a little bit lighter drag, make it a little bit easier on you. Don't make it too easy on you because if you let the, fat, the fight last too long, the hook will wear a hole in the side of the fish's mouth and if it does that, you lose the fish. We spot a lot of these fish on structure down deep. So having that vertical jigging rod, whether it's with a, a butterfly lure or something like the mega bait, I have caught so many tuna on mega baits. And it's, it's a very simple lure. You just drop it down and just wind it as fast as you can. You cannot wind faster than these fish can swim. So a nice high speed reel like this, um, Truth LGN Jim Salmon Special. Um, I can get good speed on it, but then full max pressure on that, that fish. A six foot rod, okay, six foot rod, because these fish will beat you up. They go down deep and they start doing circles down deep. If you've got a really heavy action, fast taper rod where the, the bend of the rod is six feet away from you, man, that is gonna wear you out. It is gonna put so much pressure on your lower back you know, by the end of the fight, you're gonna be whooped and you're not gonna be able to land the stinking thing. I can land fish a lot faster with a shorter rod because I can keep good pressure on it. I can do nice short strokes and just, you know, you're not doing these big long strokes. I see people do this a lot 
when you're winding on a fish that's straight down there doing these really long strokes and trying to wind down. Well, the problem is every time you try to wind down, the fish gets its head back and swims down. I would rather do really short strokes <clears throat> like this. You know, just nice and short strokes. Keep constant pressure on the fish and you just keep working it up and working it up and working it up. For throwing the poppers or the surface stuff, I like to have a little bit longer rod, the one that fell over over here. <laughs> so I can get some good casting distance on a, on a longer rod and really work those poppers for a good distance because you want to work that fish up. You know, you want to get them excited by that thing splashing on the surface, you know, and you can crank these and just make it seem like a flying fish trying to come out of the water. And that'll really get those fish lit up. But you want a little bit longer rod. I still want it to be semi-parabolic. I want that flex a little bit closer to my body because again, when you get into that straight up and down fight, a long rod is gonna beat you up. So I like a rod that's a little bit softer. I use a star drag reel for that. This is the, the Truth SS because I can get a little bit better casting distance with a star drag reel than a lever drag reel. On that reel, uh, you can generally get away with a little bit heavier line. Um, and because you're like throwing poppers, a lot of times you'll, it's easier to nick up your line. So with those, for the most part, I'm gonna be fishing 50, 60, even 80 pound uh, fluorocarbon leader. So the next step is, is once you get that fish up, you know, we like to keep these fish. I love to keep tuna. Um, you know, we'll release small ones and we never keep too many, but I'm gonna keep some tuna. There's no doubt about it. If tuna's coming up on my kayak, there's some I'm gonna be going home. And so you wanna have the proper tools. You wanna to be prepared. So whether it's having a gaff like I use or having what's called a kagi, which is uh, a lot of the guys in Hawaii use that. And that's basically like a pole spear. It's a nice heavy um, shaft with a pointed, it's almost like, like I said, it's a pole spear and you just stab that fish. Most of those guys will use a gaff as well. So it's a lot easier to get the, the coggy into a fish than reaching over a fish and pulling up with a gaff sometimes. So uh, having both of those tools ready. Um, if I'm gonna keep tuna, I wanna make sure I keep it right. And that in, means I'm gonna have an insulated game bag in my kayak. I'm gonna keep those fish down inside my boat on ice. I'm also going to bleed my fish. now. This is a decision you need to make based on the waters you're in. If you're in really sharky waters, maybe you don't wanna do this, but I always bleed my fish if I'm gonna keep them. If I'm in a sharkier situation, I've got my shark shield and I will bleed the fish into the game bag rather than over the side of the boat. Uh, bleeding the fish is quite simple. You can either, depending on the fish, you can either just reach your hand up into the gills and just pop the gill rakes out. And then because the fish was just fighting you, it's hard as racing, the blood is gonna pump out. And I can't tell you how the difference it makes in the quality of the meat if you bleed that fish out and then get it on ice. So you can either do it again, pop the gill rakes with your hand or use a knife and reach up there and cut those gill rakes. And you can also cut them at the base of the tail and that's gonna get all that blood pumped out and give you a much better tasting piece of fish. Uh, that's some, some of the gear that I use when I'm targeting uh, yellowfin tuna around the world. If you have any questions, you know, send them down in the comments section and I will answer as soon as I can. If you like the video, please give us a thumbs up and make sure you, make sure you subscribe to Kayak Fishing Tales.